Every major product and service in the world has educated people whose job it is to come up with an ad campaign for the product or service. Now, I don't claim to know how much these jobs pay, but I know for sure that some of these are high paying jobs, and that much stands to reason. Ad campaigns require ideas, so it's a potential profession for people who come up with fresh and unique ideas. But sometimes this profession requires good ideas for shitty products or services, and sometimes it is not the product or service that is lame, but some of the ideas that these high paid, educated people come up with. Take McDonald's for example. Now McDonald's has in its past numerous commercials that stick in your memory, such as Ronald McDonald helping up a little girl who was falling on the ice while ice skating, and sending out the ingredients to a Big Mac. You know, to all beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. Hey, that was a catchy jingle, and the proof is in the fact that I still remember it. But if you're a kid, chances are at least one of those ingredients gross you out. A lot of parents spend time trying to convince kids that they are not onions of food that they are eating. So I'm guessing that campaign was directed towards adults. Whether a campaign is effective or not, you have to come up with a new ad campaign eventually because you can only expose the public to the same old ad for so long before it becomes annoying. To stay on top, McDonald's needed new ads. So these educated, well-paid men and women working for McDonald's came up with a new campaign for McDonald's. So what did they come up with? I'm loving it. I can't help but wonder how much time and money went into coming up with that phrase. And someone made the decision to run with it. Then McDonald's got that phrase trademarked. I asked myself how on earth you could trademark a phrase so basic and global. Then I realized, oh, it's misspelled. It's all about the misspelling. This simple phrase approach to ad campaigns is pretty global too. Now everything has to have an ad campaign and most of these involve tagging the item with a simple catchy phrase. Foods that existed before mankind, foods that mankind has eaten since the dawn of human history, now have an ad campaign. Milk, it does the body good. Beef, it's what's for dinner. Pork, it's the other white meat. The other white meat, well that one is questionable to me. Saying the other white meat sounds to me like you're saying it's not as good or it's less significant. That's like saying the other Michael Jackson, which could be any unknown nobody from nowhere. It makes me wonder if the people who worked on that ad campaign for pork even like pork. As someone who likes pork, I think it should have said something like the sweet juicy white meat. I think that's a better ad campaign, but that's me building off the idea that they came up with so I had an unfair advantage and they still deserve some credit. I think they were smart to make a point that pork is a white meat and makes it sound more healthy and it gives a nice slant on the truth. It seems you only want to be so honest in an ad campaign. You don't want to show and tell the whole actual truth. The pork campaign doesn't want to say the white meat with a thick ring of fat around it. Just like McDonald's isn't going to say, I'm loving it for the moment. Later, a painful visit to the bathroom and discouraging numbers on the scales. After all, ads are intended to sell you things and not to educate you. We all know and accept that, and the fact is that we all want to be sold things. We just need a little encouragement to go ahead and do the thing that we want to do anyhow. So these ad executives know they need to just give you a little positive tidbit about the product to get you past your hang-ups. The beef industry tries to go one step further and use their ad campaign to implant a command. Beef, it's what's for dinner. I'm guessing they're hoping that people will invert that phrase mentally, and so when we think, what should we have for dinner, the word beef will suddenly appear within our mind. Of course chicken and pork would like to be for dinner too, but they probably consider themselves lucky that the beef is only trying to lock in the late meal. They still have breakfast and lunch. Pork has pretty much got the lock on breakfast with sausage and bacon. Chicken and beef won't take that away, but the chicken makes the egg, so they got partial dips. That leaves beef out. Or does it? No, because milk comes from the same place as beef, the cow. This calls into consideration one of the oldest ad campaigns in the world. Not all ad campaigns are about money. Sometimes we humans run ad campaigns on ourselves, just to give reality a more pleasant touch. These words, beef and pork, are we really talking about cows and pigs? But we use these words instead because it takes the animal out of the equation entirely. We name the meat itself, as if it never was a pig or a cow. One might argue that words like pork and beef are used to take the place of two words, pig meat and cow meat. 
But if shortening the terminology was the reason that we named the meat, then explain to me the word venison, which uses three syllables to say deer meat. But it sounds much more exotic. So we leave the animal out of the equation and we say for it for beef and venison. But we don't do this with chicken and turkey. If we're having chicken or turkey or pheasant, they say we're eating chicken or turkey or pheasant. Why? Not because we don't have a word for those meats. We do have a word for that meat, but it's called fowl. 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 So perhaps that's why you don't see commercials advertising chicken and turkey. Unless it's a specific brand. Instead, they market the incredible edible egg. Animals and their biological byproducts are not the only foods that man has seen fit to provide with an ad campaign. The pistachio nut now has an ad campaign. Pistachios, get cracking. Well, that's an interesting approach to focus upon the work required to obtain the food. I wonder if other vegetation will follow suit. Apples, get picking. Corn, get to shucking. Potatoes, start peeling. So we have all these basic food sources, cows, pigs, chickens, and nuts, with our own ad campaign. The one basic phrase that we will not see used is, you are what you eat. Now chicken meat, as we mentioned, doesn't have its own ad campaign. The most commercials are not for the basic foods, but rather for the businesses that distribute these basic foods. Chicken has good footing in the marketplace. There are large business that specialize in distributing chicken. One long-standing American restaurant chain is Kentucky Fried Chicken which when I was a kid in the 70s was THE fast food chicken chain. But by the late 80s, other fried food chicken chains had begun to grow in popularity, such as churches and Popeyes. So the advertising people at the Kentucky Fried Chicken sat down to discuss the reason for this. Market research showed this shift in popularity was because Popeyes and churches was becoming popular with the black population. Moreover, the black population was beginning to become the trendsetters for popularity in general as hip-hop culture spread across the country and around the world. So Kentucky Fried Chicken was forced to take a good look at its corporate image and market strategy and it realized perhaps Kentucky Fried was not a two-word combination to produce happy thoughts in the minds of the black population. At best, Kentucky Fried Chicken says Country Fried Chicken to the black population. At worst, it brings to mind Kentucky Fried Crosses or Kentucky Fried, well, you get the point. So Kentucky Fried Chicken launched a new ad campaign and it changed its image and it became KFC and they hired MC Hammer for their commercials. So all the OGs from LA to NYC could see MC dancing a jig for KFC and talking about how finger licking it was. And perhaps in time this abbreviation loving culture could forget that KFC stands for Kentucky Fried Chicken and perhaps realize that KFC now means and now here I'm going to present the new KFC that I think that that corporation has been striving towards since the late 80s to promote but is constrained by law to only allude to. KFC it's finger licking. KFC is chicken fucking chicken. Since they legally can't say it, I'll say it for them. KFC stands for chicken fucking chicken. Pass it on. So maybe I'm lucky that I don't have a job in advertising, because this inability to show and tell the truth would be annoying. There are a lot of laws regulating advertising on television and radio. It's semi-common knowledge that beer advertisements can't show someone actually taking a drink of beer on the commercial. I can only imagine that is so that they can keep people oblivious to what beer is. I'm assuming it's for the people who have beer in the fridge but don't drink it in front of their kids. So when the kids say, what's that daddy? The father can say, it's poison. Then the kid asks, what do you do with it? And the dad can say, well, you've seen the commercials. I like to pour it in glasses at bars while watching football. And then other times I like to have it on ice while I'm playing football and building up a raging thirst. After the game, I'll hold the beer bottle to my face, but obviously I don't drink it, because like I said, it's poison. So beer advertisers have to deal with this senseless constraint, because someone felt that you couldn't go public, the beer is something that sometimes some people drink. So it's okay for a commercial to show beer being poured into a hot cheese cleavage, but God forbid one drop pass between the lips and teeth. But I guess the intentions with advertising laws are good. I guess the intentions are to protect the public. I think the beer thing is ridiculous, but I can understand why prescription drug companies are forced to list the side effects of the drugs that they're advertising. After all, these are drugs that are considered too dangerous for a person who doesn't have a degree in medicine to diagnose for themselves. So what do the commercials say? Ask your doctor if Valtrex, Levitrex, Cialis, Umira is right for you. 
Marketing is a matter of supply and demand, so they're trying to drum up the demand. It seems more ideal for the patient to ask the doctor which medicine would be right for them, but it's legal for the prescription drug company to tell you what they're intended to treat and then suggest you ask the doctor if that drug is right for you. I'm not sure if all prescription drugs are allowed to do this. I haven't seen the commercial ask your doctor if oxycotton is right for you, but at least some prescription drugs are allowed to market themselves to the general public, but with the stipulation that they tell you all the side effects of the drug. This is yet another challenge that advertisers must face. While editing videos, I'm always working to match images with words, so I don't envy these advertising video editors when the words are gastral bleeding, thoughts of suicide, kidney failure, severe anxiety, and in rare cases death, because they have to tell you all this stuff and still leave you with the impression that you need to ask your doctor for some of this. So their approach is usually to go the opposite direction with their images. Gastro bleeding, severe depression, suicide and death. So once again, advertisers sometimes have to go the opposite direction of the truth. That's something I wouldn't want to earn a living doing, but then I think of that someone, or perhaps more than one person, who made a lifetime's worth of earnings for I'm loving it. This is like wood in the water. That degree in advertising really worked out well for those people. But for every millionaire who came up with I'm loving it, there are probably a thousand guys and gals trying to smooth over words like gastro bleeding. So I don't envy advertisers, but I don't demonize them either. We've been trying to blame our bad decisions on advertisers for years. Man blamed woman for convincing him to try the forbidden fruit. And what did woman do? She said the snake sold her on it. So with the very first bad decision made in human history, we have the devil in the form of an ugly snake in the form of a used car salesman. Oh, I don't doubt that the devil still has his hand in advertising, but I think he's realized by now that you can do much better in the form of a supermodel. Nobody wants to buy anything from a snake, although Geico has done pretty well with the lizard.